knowing how important testimonials are and oftentimes how hard they are to get um, or to remember to get, um, I thought it would be great to talk to you, Maggie, because I know that in your throughout your career, your agency life and everything, you've been the kind of go-to person when it comes to getting testimonials. Like if someone needs testimonial, Maggie's going to figure out how to get that testimonial. So I'd love to hear from you what some of your tips are, if you have any processes, anything that you can do to help make it easier for people to get those so critical testimonials. I love that we're talking about this because it is so, so important, but if we all think about how we do this, what do we usually do? We go, we're preparing a sales page or we're getting some marketing collateral done and oh no, we need a customer quote. Well, instead of doing that, create a system that it's really just part of that process. So let's say you run a services based business and you on and off work clients for projects because you're like a graphic designer or copywriter or something. Build that into your process so that when the project is wrapped, you know the client is happy, there's just a series of steps that you execute so you know it's going to be done because if every time you have to manually intervene and go oh yeah i need to ask for the quote then all this mental junk comes up and you get all psyched out or if let's say you're a b2b software company when in the process do your salespeople have that touch point build that into the process and the pipeline you use so it becomes really really seamless okay but if you're going to ask you need to make this easy. This is where people make the biggest mistake because they don't make it easy to say yes. The request is vague. It's too onerous. So if you if you want them to do a video with you, say we're going to use a video. This is how we're going to use it, or we're going to use this in written materials. Be very very specific. Um, you can always go back and say, hey, are you cool with us using it for this? But you need to get over that objection. And the objection is the biggest thing because if you work with big companies at all it's impossible to get testimonials. It'd be written right into your contract a lot of time to say, oh, you know what, you can't, there's a no endorsement policy. So you're like, oh, okay. And a lot of times what people tend to do is they lie down and they go, oh, I can't have it. And it's like, no, you can't have it. You just need to get creative. So okay. when I, yeah, love, uh, this is one of my absolute favorite examples. So a couple years ago, I was working with a B2B software company and they worked a lot with the US military and they did knowledge management software. And mm. they, the results they were getting, like literally from out in the field, like. You know, you had people in Afghanistan being able to share knowledge to improve what they're doing is really, really compelling and life-changing and life-saving stuff. But the U.S. military, the Air Force can't give you a quote. So I'm like, how can we do this? Yeah. So what we ended up doing was we did a bunch of joint speaking ops with the one colonel. And then I had a video from the speaking ops where we could put that on the website. We could pull quotes. We included the quotes and articles. We were able to do all these things because it wasn't the traditional way of doing it. So get a little bit creative um, okay. and just know that testimonial or endorsement doesn't have to be like a quote. It can be so many different things. So just, you know, get creative about what you ask and really position it as a win for the person. Uh, the other thing in that too, if you can find someone who's a bit of a rule breaker or likes to, you know, uh, go rogue, they're the perfect person to get to do this sure. because sometimes they'll just be like, oh, I don't care about the rules. I'll just do it anyways. So yeah. usually you can use that for a while until someone catches up with you. This is not legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lawyer somewhere just died inside. <laughs> Big disclaimer at the bottom of the screen, right? I'm not a lawyer, nor do I play one on television. <laughs> so, you okay. know, here, you know, but the other thing is the quote. We go, oh, I'm going to ask for a quote. Oh my gosh. Most people, they're not a writer, you know, answering questions, writing quote becomes really, really onerous. So maybe it's a testimonial, uh, but most of all, you want to shape what questions you're going to ask them. So here's the cardinal sin of quotes. Working with Maggie was really great. What the hell does that mean? Mag working with Maggie was great. Yeah. Greatly annoying, greatly frustrating, greatly awesome. We don't know what that means. So if you can actually put that into a bucket and new, ask like three really, that's three, three really specific questions to say, you know, what were, what was the before, what was the after, what are your results? That's all you really need to know. And then, you know, the last part of this really comes down to um, know your audience, know who you're asking. So let's say it's a CEO of a company, maybe they're going to be too busy. Maybe you can get them on the phone for five minutes and interview them and send them a quote for approval. Maybe you can't even get them to answer questions. Offer to write the quote for them to yeah. uh, just tweak. And that's totally legitimate. When I started off years ago in public relations, I was mortified that people wrote quotes for approval. But this isn't, it's okay. You can totally do this. You have permission. 
Yeah, we do it all the time. I agree. Yeah. I think like there are so many opportunities where you just let it go because you're afraid to ask for, right? Like you're putting them out, but okay, like you said, make it easy to say yes, which is like a yeah. cardinal rule of copywriting in general anyway, right? Um, get that yes. So if you can write that testimony, I've done that a, a lot, a lot. Write it, write it the way you want it so you can get your best testimonial out of them and then send it to them. And I don't think I've ever heard no, we're not going to do that. Like, it's always like, great. Yep. Here's my name. And you tell them all the good things about it too, right? We're going to link to you. So one more inbound link, right? Or whatever. But all those little pieces that makes it really easy to say yes. Yeah. Because really ultimately the, the job, the job of this is not just for your social proof. It's to make really weave your customer or your client's story into part of your bigger story. Cause that is so, so compelling. So if you can find the ways to turn them into the hero, instead of making your marketing all about you being the hero, that makes it, it's a game changer. And I think that once you start really, really, really intentional about that and telling your client's stories, people can identify with that so much more than, you know, your, your brand or your face yeah. on your website. Maggie was great to work with or whatever your quote was, right? Yeah, yeah that, that's, no, no, right? There's so many reasons that that's wrong. And that's one of the things, right? You're the hero in that versus the client, so. Yeah, your hero's journey should be your client's journey, not yours.